let's uh thank you that it's on okay no oh, but iron capital uh, oh that's it okay but he didn't record yeah okay uh yeah i'm here we're recording we're good there you go yeah here we go we got you we got you where are you up to? Where, uh, where do we leave off? Jack, we're by the two dots by Kamash Malan, no? What's well, today's daf? Samachalaf? Today's Samachalaf, yeah. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm sorry. I get confused what daf we're holding. Okay, I'll, okay I was I was on summer phase. Um, okay, yeah, we left off. Right, we left off the two dots on the bottom. Thank you. Bottom of Samachalaf base. Um, yeah, so, uh, okay, well, okay, let's just do the Gemara and then we'll talk about the Inyanam as we go along. Pshita. Uh, I think we did that. No, no, we didn't. So if he shows her a Bika, she's not Mikudashes. Meaning he tells her, I'm marrying me on condition that I have a field. So if he shows her a field in one of the bikas, one of the plains, when he just shows her a bunch of fields, so she's not married, right? Because we said yesterday, because our kavana, when he she understood when he says I have a field that it's his field, not that he's going to show her a field, right? Um, right. So now, so what's he saying? It's pashit. So pshita lechul the nagan b'distura. So it's talking about where he has he's like a sharecropper, meaning he has a chelik in the field. Right, he has a chilek in the field. He just, uh, he he's just, uh, how do you say it? He's a sharecropper. I don't know why I didn't call it an oris. Right, this dude, I guess that's Aramaic for the word oris. Rashi says an oris, he's a sharecropper. So he has a chilek in the field. So he really does have a portion of the field. But still, it's not, uh, um, it's still, it's it's not considered like his field. Okay, so Gabi Hektish Tanan, on Tamar Aleph now, uh, by Hektish, we learned how Maktish today Bishas Hayoival. If somebody's Maktish is field Yoival. So we know that a person can make his field into Hektish. Right? So what do you do when you make a field in Hektish? So they, they obviously the base of Mikdash is not gonna do anything with this field. What are you supposed to do with it? Right? So what are you gonna do? You pay to the field, you go to a real estate agent and you see how much the field is worth. And if, let's say he says it's worth uh, ten thousand dollars. So that's what you do. You give it, you give it uh, you, you give ten thousand dollars. Ten thousand dollars becomes hektish. The field now becomes chulin. But if you do it during yovel, there it's a set. It's a set price. It's exeris hakosov. Rashi is exeris hakosov. Doesn't make a difference. The field is a good field, a bad, a bad field. Um, that you just paid it. Uh, how does it come out again? Uh, Fifty. Uh, uh, there's a shear for it. All right, it's fifty shekel for a core. Right. But that, that's the way it goes during during Yoiba. Um Yes. Um, right? So Hamaktish today of Bashasa Yoival. So if you mark this, you feel Bashasa Yoival, nice and bizarre chimer sairim. I should have looked at the next line. I'm trying. <laughs> right, I'm trying to remember the number. It's the next line. Yeah, she should I tell you? You give with the zera of chaimer of sa'irim, meaning the amount of a chaimer of barley, fifty shekel kesef. If there is these holes that are deep, um. Like, uh, you know, like uh, you have a crack in the field, like a hole, or you have a big rock in the field that are higher than 10 tfachim. So that means they're a shus bifnei atzman. They're, they're, they're on a shus themselves. Einim nadan ima. You don't measure it. You don't measure the field. Right? Like we said, we said, uh, how much was the base core? What do we say? 75,000 square amas, right? We said yesterday, 75,000 square amas. So if the field is that size, so then it gets the 50 shekel. Shekel Kesef, right? So, but you don't count. You don't count. Um, 
um, you don't count the, any holes in the ground and you don't count rocks. It's like an Erevin thing, right? Rahman, that you count the, a hill. When you're counting Erev Tchum, so that you count the hills on a slant. Right? So you have 2,000 Amas, and, but it's on a hill. So, right? So, so do you count the hill as 2,000 Amas? Do you look at, or you look at the hill as if it's flat? can make a big difference in how, especially upstate, can make a big difference how far you could walk. So it depends how steep the hill is. So here we're saying that if it's 10 Tfachim higher, 10 Tfachim deep, then it doesn't work. Right? So they were, they were clearing. Granted, it's not, you don't make it hectic. But why don't we calculate all the rocks and all the holes by themselves? Meaning, let's say the guy has a ton of holes in his field. Maybe that has enough of a measurement. Right? But if it's not a base core, it's not considered chashev or a minor Sada matamulai. Why does he have to say the word sada? It says that a zera of a chaimer is considered of sa'irim. Right? Um, it says that a zera of a chaimer of sa'irim. Right? Is chamishim mainly ala shehikdish b'inyan b'inyan azeh. That's only if it became hikdish in this way. Minayin l'rabis lesech b'chatzi lesech sa tirko b'chatzi tirko b'filu roiva minayin. All these small measurements. How do you know? Tamulai mer sada mikom up. It says sada. So you see that you could calculate. There are smaller fields, meaning the basic field for 50 shekel kesef is a field that's a core, base core. But even if it's less than that, right? Even if it's less than that, it's, uh, it's a problem. So how come you don't calculate the, the, the rocks that are higher than 10 tfachim and the holes? So I'm going to well, You're right, we should calculate, but we're talking about where they're full of water. They can't be used for planting anyways. So since they can't be used for planting, so you're not going to count them towards being paided. Take an army, and we've been dying. And this is the Dumi the slime gavayim. It's comparable to slime gavayim. Yaakov, right. has, this, has this changed? This man is there. Because they only did, they only did, they were only farmers. The guy has a piece of land. I wrote down last. It's it's four and a half by seven acres, between four and a half and seven acres, depending. Right. That, yeah. Right. right. That could be worth eighty-five million dollars in the middle of Manhattan. What? What? what so what it has and holes of rocks and stuff, or on a beach in, in California, they, they they bought a piece of land for sixty million dollars before they even build a house. You no, know, so what? It's a special din by Yoival, right? It's a special din by Yoival. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's exer- that's I think why Rashi says Gzeris Hakosim. He's coming like Fuke Rebar Horowitz. The second line down in the Rashi. Good, Don't stop. Good, good. Right, it's Gzeris Hakosim. Nothing to talk about. <laughs> anyway, so we're saying so. Shmami know that. We're talking about these holes in the field that are full of water. Since they're full of water, they're not plantable. But enochanami, if they wouldn't be full of water, then you would calculate them separately. So then maybe calculate the holes even less than that too. So Hanu, so Gemara says, Hanu nagni da'aram mikru, shudra da'aram mikru. These things are called nagni da'ara. And um, how do you touch nagnu da'ara? It's a, uh, they're like part of the land, right? Mikru and Shidru the Aaron, and Shidru is like the backbone of the land, meaning they're not individual. If the hole is less than 10th Fachim, that's considered part of the land, <coughs> right? So therefore, it's still counted towards, towards the regular field, meaning it's not counted independent. If the holes are bigger than 10th Fachim or the rocks are higher than 10th Fachim, they're individual, they're, they're separate entities. Right, but everything else, but if it's less than that, then it's not. Fine. Um, so Gabi Mecher, Tanan. So anyway, so that's by Hektish. So by Hektish, we say that the holes are considered independent. Fine. Gabi Mecher, Tanan, what about the selling? Meaning, stand by Mechirahim, or the Chavere base core of Arani Mechel, the guy tells his friend, I'm selling you a base core of dirt. Well, I mean dirt, meaning he's selling him a land, a base core. 
And there are holes in the ground that go down 10 tvachim, or rocks that go higher than 10 tvachim. So now, when he says a base core, is it, is it meaning, does it include on top of these rocks or, or, or in these holes, is that included in the calculations or not? Right? So we're saying by Mechira, it's not counted. If it's if it's ten tfachim or higher, then it's not counted as part of the land. Fachas mikanim dalim ima, it gets measured. Right? Vama maruka rachama alfi shein malayim mayim, even if they're not full of water. So now we say it's we see it's a uh, it's a different din. My time. Am rapavul fi shein adam writes a sheet in his ma'aser besada achas biyir like kishnayim kishlaishim akaymas. The reason is is because a person when he wants to buy one field. He wants to buy one field. If you're going to have all these cracks in it that are bigger than 10 tfachim or these rocks, it's going to look like he bought himself separate fields. Right? So, Mela, he's not happy with that. So, by Mechira, we say it doesn't count. So, Hochamai. So, good. So, now we have one din by Hektish and one din by Mechira. Okay? Meaning, by Hektish and Mechira, it seems like you're going to count it. And by Mechira, by Hektish, you're not going to count it. And by Mechira, I don't know, if, I don't know which way counting it is. Counting is called, but uh, meaning by Hektish. Sorry. Yeah, by Hektish, it, uh, I'm, I'm hearing myself twice. Sorry, it's just walking. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Tell parents to go back in the hot tub and then off of this. <laughs> yeah. Nah, it's the mikvah. It's the mikvah. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Right, Mr. Mikvah ready. Oh, there he is. There he is. Um, yeah, so anyway, so by Hekdish has one din and by Mechira has another din. So now what about by marriage? When a guy says he's giving, he's going to marry his wife if he has a base core or whatever it is. Right, so what's the din then? Is it like marriage? Is it like hektish, or is it like uh, mechira? So my la hektish medamina la. Do we compare it to hektish, or la mecha medamina la, or do we compare it to to mechira? So Gemara says, "Es mestaver la hektish medamina la." Mestama, we compare marriage to hektish. Tamar la, I'm not tarchana vezarna or mycina, because he says, "Don't worry about the holes in the ground. I'm going to be matriach myself, and I'm going to." I'm going to plant in it and I'm going to bring it to you. Right? So, uh, which is interesting because marriage is called Kedushin, right? Marriage is called Kedushin, right? So you think, okay, compare it to Hektish. Right? It's got to be a vart there. It's got to be a vart there, right? I mean, Hektish, Kodush. All right, nobody's buying it. If Gershon was on, he would, uh, he would have something to say. Right? Um, fine. Okay, Zog Division. Oh, so now before the next mission, we got, um, yeah, before the next mission, we need to have Akadama. And Mamish Omid Bez is going to say, we Mamish, what's the chances in the middle of Kedushin that we're going to have Sukkim from this week's Parsha in this Sugya, right? Um, so, uh, this, we know that something called a Tanai, right? When then you make a condition. So there's a question does the Tanai need to be a Tanai couple or not? Does it need to be doubled up? Meaning, if I say to you, if you give me $100, I will give you a field. And if, and if, I don't, if you don't give me the $100, then I'm not giving you the field. I mean, you have to say both sides. You have to say both sides of it. Um, what's right? the, what's the time of the crop for the pot for, for Tarkov? What do you mean? We, why we? Why is the Torah do tonight, Kafel? What? Do you, why did Torah say tonight, Kafel? And why did Moshe Rabbeinu do it with the Bnei God of Bnei Ruben? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why did you just say yeah? So why? Why is that a component of a tonight? Yeah, we had this in the dorm. I don't know why we it's not. It's not really. It's just like Ben Sarah Ramayra. It doesn't. It's not real. It just made it up. 
I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not sure what I was saying over here. You know, it's okay. <laughs> don't, don't, don't waste any time on it. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Meaning, why did Maisha Rabbeinu make a tonight couple with them? I'm saying, why? Well, I'm that's, asking, what? That's what's part the of the Mablikis. The Gemara is going to bring Mablikis. five, six cases where it's all tonight couple. Well, what's, what, what? I'm asking, what is the reason for tonight couple for? Like, why? What's what? Like, what is it? Is what? Am I making Why sense? Why is it there? Because it strengthens. It's yes. It strengthens the tanai. It strengthens the tanai. You say it both ways. It makes it very clear. All right. We're gonna see. We're gonna see in the Gemara that there's different examples where you might think that if you don't say the reverse of the tanai, then it then it might it might not be clear exactly what the ramifications would be. So any well, tonight that you okay. make any tonight that you make, if it's not a couple, so automatically it's not a tonight. Correct. We we learn out from this that a tonight kafel is not a real tonight. Yeah. Uh -huh. So all in the whole right. tradition, I mean, when we're doing all these tonight, if you give fifty zos, if you sit, if there's no kafel, then it's not negay. It's worthless. Correct. Okay. Correct. Okay. Um, but again, so what's the story? Bnei God and Bnei Ruvain, as they were traveling in Teretz Canaan, liked uh, what's it called? What was the land? What was the name of the land again? We'll see it on the base. What? We're, Maybe we're no, but there's a name. No, 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 but there's a name for it. Uh, uh, come on. Give not give one not. Uh, Okay, we'll get we'll get to it. Whatever it is, they like Gillard, the Gillard, the Gillard, 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 Gillard. It was Gillard? Yeah. Okay, whatever. Yeah. So. So, anyways, uh, so basically, they came. They wanted to come. They wanted to stay on their that side of land. They wanted. They said, "We'll give up our land in Eretz Canaan. We want to stay here." So Moshe Rabbeinu told them. If you guys come with us, you guys, you know, the Rabban Shech didn't like guys. We're not even, if you, if you shave it, if you shvat it, come with us and help us conquer Eretz Canaan, meaning the standard Eretz Yisrael, then you guys, you can, then you can go back and keep that land. But if you don't, then you can't. That's basically the way Moshe Rabbeinu told it to them. So that's the source that we learned tonight, Kofel. But it's a machloik, it's an our Mishnah. Remeir holds that that's the source of tonight, Kofel. And Rav Hanina ben Gamliel holds no. He needed to say a tonight couple for a different reason. Right? Yeah, it's Gilad. Right, Gilad. There you go. Right, that's what it is. What? Oh, that's the land of Gilad. Yeah, so anyway, so let's see. So Ramey is optimist. Ramey, Ramey, call tonight. Sha'ina ketanai b'nei God b'nei Ruben. Any tonight, any condition that's not like the b'nei God b'nei Ruben, ain't a tonight. It's mamish, not a tonight. There you go, Zev. It's not, it's not considered a tonight. And my Moshe Rabbeinu told them, If they'll pass over and help out Klai, so fine. If they don't pass over, Chalutim means that they were armed, then, et cetera, et cetera, then they're not going to get their land. Right? So Rameir says, you see that Moshe Rabbeinu told them both ways. He says, if you come, you'll get this reward. And if you don't come, you're not going to get the reward. Right? So you see that that's how you have to do it. You need to say it. Meaning, Moshe Rabbeinu had to say it that way. Because if not for that, if Moshe Rabbeinu wouldn't have said, and if you don't, you won't get Eretz Gilad, you'll still get Eretz Kanan. Meaning, if Moshe Rabbeinu would have just told him, if you come with us, you'll get your land. Right? So they may have thought, okay, and if they don't come with them, then not only they're not going to get Eret, the Eret Gilad, <coughs> they're not even going to get an Eret Yisrael either. So that's why Moshe Rabbeinu had to tell them, if you don't come with us, you won't get Gilad, but you will get Kenan. That's where Rav Chanidah Ben Gamliel says it. So Mela, based on this Machlaikis, that's why totally that in whether sense? you can, whether you have, we need tonight coffee. Why not? Well, if they don't come, why would they get Eret Yisrael? Because they have that Chalik anyways. They, they wanted a bonus. Well, totally, they're entitled to like all the other Shvatim. 
Only if they came. They, if they no, why, who said they, they, they came? What if they, if they didn't they, even? No, they it. wanted they wanted a different land. They wanted a different right. land. Right. Right. They wanted a different land. So he said, "Okay, good. If you come fight with us, I'll give you the other land." Right. So any shaver question is why did he say sit this out and get it? What? Any shaver could have said, "I want to sit out the wars and get." It. That's what you're saying. That's what it sounds sounds like. I have no idea if it sounds like that. You better hope so because uh, a lot of our shaver is not in the war now going on, right? I think it was a little. Okay. <laughs> As you right. open yourself up, okay. Enough to, okay. You open yourself up. <laughs> I'm not getting <laughs> land there. <laughs> I ain't going to get any land when we Yeah, but anyways, war, right? that, okay, that's the machoik. Sure. Now, this is this gets confusing here. It gets confusing and it gets technical. So, Gemara says, Shapa, Karmali, Rab Khanina, Ben Gamliel, Rameir. Rab Khanina, Ben Gamliel said a good title to Rameir. I'm going to look Rameir. Rameir will say back to you, know, Esau died to Chlavla tonight, Kofalu. If you think that the reason why Moshe Rabbeinu didn't say, and if you don't come with us, you're not going to get land, is not for tonight, Kofalu, who does also lift off him, Layavru, but Nefsu, Besaychachem. Why couldn't Moshe Rabbeinu tell him? And if you don't come with us, you'll get your Yerusha. Beretz Kanan on Tommy Bays now. Beretz Kanan Lomali. Why did he have to say Beretz Kanan? Right? He didn't have to say, you're not going to get your Yerusha. He said, Evim lo yavru v'nechsu b'soychem Beretz Kanan. So Shema Aminola, tonight Kofalu does it. So the extra word, Eretz Kanan, is telling you tonight Kofalu. Okay, what's Rabbi Chanina Magamliel going to do with Ramey? Rabbi Chanina Magamliel, I'm going to eat la, eat la, kasa, rachmana, beretz kanan. If the Torah wouldn't have written beretz kanan, hava mina benechsa b'seichem beretz gilad, you would get a portion of eretz gilad. Meaning, you'll split eretz gilad with the rest of the shvatim. Aval eretz kanan klaloi. Maybe you won't get eretz kanan at all. So that's why you needed to say eretz kanan that they're going to get. They'll get a chelik in eretz gilad. And they'll get a chalik in Eretz Kanan. Rameir, Besoichachem. Rameir says the word Besoichachem tells you, Kol Heicha de Islechu Mashma. That's wherever it's going to be. Right? Fine. So that, that's the back and forth between Rameir and Rukhanina ben Gamliel. Fine. Now the Gemara, for whatever reason, this is, brings an interesting muscle to try and explain Rukhanina ben Gamliel's um, shita. Right? So Tanya, Amar Rukhanina ben Gamliel, Mashal Amad Avr Daimah. What is a muscle to explain what went on here? We have a muscle. You have a father who's giving out his belongings to his kids. Amar plaini bini yirash sade plainis. He says plaini bini will yarshin this field. Let's say let's say his oldest son will yarshin one field. O plaini bini yirash sade plainis, and my second son will yarshin this field. O plaini bini yitain masayim zuz, and my third son. For whatever reason, it's getting treated worse. He's going to have to give Yitin Masayim Zuz. He has to give 200 Zuz. And then he'll Yarshin Sada Plinus. And if he doesn't give the 200, Yirash Im Im Achiv Bishar Nechasim. Then he's just going to Yarshin the other Nechasim with his brothers. Right? So again, you hear what he said? He said to his third son, if you give 200 zoos, you'll yarsh in a field. And if you don't give it, right now, that's the flip side, right? Again, he told him a tonight. If you give the, um, if you if you give 200 zoos, you're going to yarsh in it, right? And if he doesn't, then he's going to inherit with his brothers a chalik of their fields, right? Which is exactly what went on over here. B'nai God and B'nai Ruvain, if they give a certain amount, meaning they come fight, then they will be part of, of they'll get their field that they want. But if not, then they're going to split the, 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 the main field of Eretz Canaan, the main field of Eretz Canaan with their brother. So, what caused him to be able to yarsh? Right? It's the 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 Lushan kafal that caused him to 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 yarshin it, right? You hear the marshal? So he's saying the reason why the father had to say, and if you don't, meaning let's say the father would have stopped and would have said, 
if you give you 200 zoos, you get yourself your own field. And he wouldn't have said anything else. So then what would you infer from that? That if he, if he didn't give his 200, what does he get? Nothing. That's what I would have inferred. All right, again, son number one gets a field. Son number two gets a field. Son number three says, if you give 200 zoos, you get a field. All right? And if mamashma, and if you don't give 200 zoos, you get nothing. All right? So that's why you have to say, and if you don't give 200 zoos, you'll split the other two fields with your brothers. All right? So that's why you needed the Tanai Kafel. So that's a proof. That price is a proof to Reb Hanina ben Gamliel. So the Gemara asks, "For how long do you mashal the masnis?" And that mashal is not the same as our Mishnah. Hasam kutari yesh the mashma ashafilu beretz kanan lo yinchalo, because there it's mashma that even in eretz kanan they're not going to inherit, right? Which was Rameir's taina. Rameir's taina. You, if it's you're not going to yashin even the Eretz Kanan. So what do you see? That the, the Kafal Lashem is working for Eretz Gilad. Here, what's causing him to yashin with his brothers? The, the Kafal causes it. So you see that the Kafal is for Shar Nechassim. Right, whatever it is. So you, according to this, you see that there's a stira between the Bryce, meaning the Bryce and the Mishnah are not exactly the same. So when it says like Kasha, Homakame, the name of the Reb Meir Benachzu, Holabasa, the name of the Reb Meir Benachzu. One is talking about before Reb Meir came back with the Taina and says, "Well, then why did he say Benachzu that you should have a, you should take possession?" And the other one is talking about after Reb Meir says Benachzu, right? Well, I don't say v'nechzu, v'nechzu. Right? The Brisa, again, the Mishnah is talking about before Rameir came back and he said that the v'nechzu tells you that there's going to be some sort of Yerusha anyways. And the Brisa is talking about after he told him v'nechzu. Okay. Now, so basically, again, we have Machlekes, Rameir, and Rav Hanina ben Gamliel, as to whether Moshe Rabbeinu used the Tanai Kofel or not. So now, now we get into this week's Parsha. So now we're going to ask a bunch of kashas now on Rameir's sheet of Tanai Kofel. Bisham, I mean, on, on Reb Hanina ben Gamliel's sheet. Bisham, I don't know if anybody got to the end of the Parsha yet, but we have the Machlaikis, not the Machlaikis, the Cain and Hevel story, right? Yeah, so Cain killed Hevel, so Hashem said to him, if you do tshuva, imtative se'es. If you do good, then, meaning if you get better, se'es, you're going to get a prize. You're going to get a schar. And if you're not going to be good, you're going to be sitting at the doorway of a chatas. Right? So meaning, this is a t'nai kofel. Right? There you go. Here's your vart for the, here's your vart for the shavas. This is a t'nai kofel. Right, Hashem told him if you to call Kayan, if you get better, good mashma, and if you don't get better, it's not good. So why do you have to tell him back and say, and if you don't get better, it's not good? Why? Why the double lashon? So, but according to a mayor, it makes sense because every tonight needs to be a tonight kofel, which is quite interesting because this is Hashem. I mean, Hashem could do whatever he wants, right? So his Hashem's handling with Kayan. Right, he was saying that he has to deal with it with a tanai kofel. Okay, now the Rebchanina Lamali, according to Rebchanina, what do you need to do? What do you, why did Hashem have to say this for? It's more answer. Sagdai the Chmina imtative agra. If meaning, if he wouldn't have said it back, then this is what this is what you would think. If you do good, you'll get schar. Im loytative. If you don't do good, loy agra v'loy dana dina. You won't get schar, but you won't get judged either. Meaning, you'll be neutral. Kamash Malan, that he was telling him, no, if you don't do tshuva, you're actually going to get punished. Right? Again, Rukhanina Magaliel is saying that you, you need that Tanai Kofel, you need that flip side of the Tanai in order to tell him, by the way, if you just stay paru, you're going to get punished. Right? If he would have just said the first thing, if you do tshuva, you'll get schar. Mashma, if you don't do tshuva, you'll be neutral. Nothing. You'll have nishtahin nishtahir. Fine. That's Kasha number one. Then the Kasha number two is from in a few weeks from now, Parsha. Bishlam the Rameir, 
right? Because Avram Avinu made Eliezer make a whole tenai who he's going to take as a shidduch for Yitzchak, right? So he made all sorts of conditions with him. So he told him, if you're going to be, if you find the girl that are good, and if not, then you're then you're out of the deal, right? You don't have to keep your word, my what what we said, right? So Bishon the mayor who says it's tonight kafel hanidusiv oz tinaka me'alasi. He says, if you don't find a girl who's related to me, who's going to be willing to come, so then you're done with you're done with uh, you kept your word, right? El Reb Chanina Magamilu Lamali. Why do you need to say? The, if you don't, why do Abraham? We don't have to tell Eliezer. And if you don't keep the deal, then uh, then it's going to be a problem. If you do good, if not, not. So it's real sad that I mean, maybe it'll be a case where she's willing to come, the family is not willing to let her go. So you would think, okay, he should force, he should just take her. Kamash Malan. That's what the Pasuk is telling you. Um, um, Kamash Malan said, it's teaching you, no, that he does not have to bring her. It has to be, it has to be with the consent of her and her family. Right? So, okay. So then, in loy soiva ha'isha lamali. So what about, why does he need to say, and if the woman does not want to come? It's trich. Sagadat, I mean, the other case. Let's say it's talking about where they want to send her, but she doesn't want to come. Naisi bal karcha, we should bring her against her will. Kamash malon, that he should not do that. Okay, so that's the second kasha. Next kasha. Bishlam remeir hainu dusivim buchik vim bechu kaisai say lechu rabba da toichacha. It says if you go with my if you go with my chukos, then good vim bechu kaisai timasu, right? And then if not, then you're gonna be timasu, yeah. So that's why it says both. El Rav Chanina Magalil Lamali. Why do you need it for? So we say it's just saying that. I mean, in bechu kaisai teleichu bracha. If you go with my laws, then it's gonna get a bracha. In bechu kaisai timasu. But if you're gonna be disgusted by me, you're not gonna do it. So loy bracha, loy klal. It's not gonna be a bracha. It's not gonna be a klal. Kamash malan. So therefore, it teaches us that no. If you don't do good, then you're going to get a klal. Bishlam the Rameir, one more. Bishlam the Rameir, Hainu Lusivim Saivu Shmatem. This is already in Yeshaya, so uh, I'm not. Uh, I'm not saying I knew the other ones either, but uh, it says Vim Tim Vim Tim Im Im Tavu Ushmatem. If you come and you and you listen, right? I mean, if you want to and you listen, Vim Timanu Merisim. And if you rebel and you go bad. Right, so he says Yeshai is telling telling Klai, so both ways. But according to Reb Chanina Ben Gilil, why does he need to say both ways? So he won't answer. It's exactly the same. Taivu Taivu. If you want to do good, you'll have good. Vim Timanu. And if you say you don't want to do good, Loi Taivu Loi Ra. You won't have good and you won't have bad. Kamash Malan. It teaches us that you will that you are going to have bad. If you don't listen to Yeshaya do Chua, it's going to be bad for you. Okay, my. Cherev Taichlu, what does it mean that you're going to eat swords? Right, so Rashi, Rachel, and this is a few, it's a whole diktuk thing. Cherev Taichlu sounds like you're going to eat a sword. Right? If it would say Bicherev Taichlu, then it sounds like you'll be eaten with a sword. Meaning the, the Pasuk is trying to tell you that you're going to be eaten by a sword. If you don't behave, you're going to be eaten by a sword. Right, but the pasuk when it says cherev taichlu sounds like your klal Yisrael will eat a sword. Right, so what does it mean? So I'm a rava milcha glulanisa nama dasari akusho but that you're gonna eat milcha glulanisa which is like a bad salt nama dasari which is bread barley bread which is bad and uh, and onions. So I'm a mar pas purni chariva melacho b'tzalon karton leguf charolu. Stale bread, pas porni, right? made stale bread made in a in a whatever I guess it's old bread made with salt and onions is difficult for the body like haravas like having swords. Yeah, so that's that's what the pasuk means by achal means you're gonna be eating swords. I mean you they end up having food that's totally not good for them. And that's uh, that's it. That's all for today. All right.
the Olam should have themselves a good Shabbos. We should only have Pesudas Tavis over Shabbos. Why don't you learn out from Kriya yeah. You know, this is the second part. Bahaya Im Shemaya. It tells you everything good. And Melo Shemaya. Then Melo Halab. The Vayicha Raf Hashem Bechem. Why don't we just learn from Kriya We said that every day. When you learn from Kriya what? Can I talk couple? All right. One second. Again? Again? What? What? Second Barak of Kriya Shema. You know, the Shema? Yeah. Right? So. I mean, if you don't listen. Then it tells me good. Right? And it says it in Vahaya? I think so. We say it every day. That doesn't mean anything. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lush and Adam. Hold on, hold on. Uh, it doesn't say, it says, Ishamru Lachem Pen Yiftel of Avchem, the Sartem of Atemeli, Elikima Hirim, or Helayima Hirim. It doesn't say, and if you don't listen, it just says. <laughs> Right. So it's only it doesn't. I don't know if that's considered a tonight cough. All right, I gotta uh, get dressed. Oh, <laughs> me too. All right. Okay, okay. All right. Have a good job. Right. Good job.